A lot of hype has been built up around this TV and now it's time to find out. Is QD OLED really the next level TV display technology? We've been hoping it would be. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and today I'm gonna review the Sony A95K, the world's first TV to be built on the all new QD OLED display technology. The hype around this TV is pretty big and I mean, let's be real here, that's at least partially my fault. Based on just a few minutes of seeing QD OLED in action at CES, reading the details contained in a scientific white paper and some pointed interview questions, I've predicted that QD OLED technology alone is so next level, it could change the TV game. The fact that Sony is building a TV around that tech has given me enough confidence to predict that A95K will be one of the highest performing TVs of the year, if not the hottest TV of 2022. So I flew to San Diego, paid Sony a visit, and spent many hours with the A95K and well, I've got the goods for you. The aesthetics, the performance measurements, the real world viewing analysis, all of that and more. So grab a beverage and a snack, sit back and relax. Here's my exclusive take on the Sony A95K. Before I dig into it, I just wanna say thanks to all of you who have liked and subscribed to this channel already. You're a big part of why I got the first crack at Sony's new TVs. And if you haven't already subscribed, now would be a great time to do it because when we get to 1 million subs and we're gonna get there, we're gonna have a huge giveaway for subscribers and I'm not, not saying that the A95K could be first prize. You could help make that happen. So thanks for your support. All right, let's dig in. So let's talk about the A95K's design first. This is Sony's new flagship OLED TV, and as expected, Sony has a fresh look for the TV. The most standout feature is the TV's stand, which is reversible to provide two very different looks. For the better part of the video, you'll see the A95K in what I'll call a more traditional orientation, with the base supporting the TV from the back, as seen here. This places the bottom of the A95K flush against the surface of whatever you place it on, mimicking a look we've seen from Sony's flagship sets over the past couple of years and it's a look I happen to like but you be your own judge. The other configuration flips the base so that it's at the front of the TV and this allows you to place the TV flush against a wall behind it which almost gives it a wall mounted look without it actually being wall mounted and as someone at Sony also pointed out for those of you with little kids who think every screen's a touch screen it also puts the screen a little further out of reach. The base itself is a textured matte black, so no worries on fingerprints, and it also happens to have the faintest bit of sparkle effect to it too. It also happens to be quite heavy. Of course, you won't need to take the stand out of the box if you decide to wall mount this TV, which is a very straightforward affair. Standard Visa mounting holes are on the back. And if you do wall mount, I think you'll find this A95K QD OLED to be sufficiently low profile. As with most OLED-based TVs, the top is slimmer than a smartphone, and then you have a bit of a bump out on the lower two thirds of the back where the TV's electronic guts are housed. Now, in keeping with Sony form as of late, there are three cover panels that snap into place to hide your cables and give the back of the TV a clean look. You can also conceal a connection bay if you don't decide to use it. This is the built-in connector for Sony's new Bravia cam, which I'm not gonna dig into right now because it wasn't ready to be tested when I visited. So I'll leave that for a future review. Just know that on the A95K and Z9K, you can just snap an included Bravia cam into the back of the TV, no USB cable necessary. Okay, that's it for the back of the TV. Nothing else to talk about there. Really all pretty standard stuff. So let's move on to the front. Oh, what's that? Ah, uh, yes, HDMI ports. <laughs> Silly me, I almost forgot. You get four HDMI ports. Two of them support 4K 120 hertz and VRR. And yes, to answer what I know has been a burning question for some time now, VRR will work right out of the box. They're good to go. I'll address VRR a little more in the gaming section at the end, but for now, we really do need to move on to the front of the TV. Oh, also, it's worth pointing out that the A95K and in fact, all Bravia TVs have an ATSC 3.0 next gen TV tuner. Can't promise that's gonna be of a huge value to you, but there it is. As expected, the front of the A95K is super clean and otherwise, well, kind of unremarkable, but 
Part of the reason it is so unremarkable is because of what you don't really see, and that's an illuminated Sony logo. In fact, the only lights on the front of the TV are an amber light that can tell you if the TV's microphone is on and listening, which you can turn off in the menu, and another white LED that flashes when you press buttons on the remote, and you can turn that off in the menu as well. The only other thing I wanna mention here is not something we could really catch on camera, and that's the screen itself. When it's off, it is not jet black. It looks instead kind of dark gray, kind of like a plasma TV screen looked back in the day. I would say it's not something you're likely to notice, except, well, I noticed it. But I think part of the reason I noticed this on just one of the days I was using it is because it was parked right next to the A90J and A80K, both of which do have jet black screens. When the TV was on its own on our set, I didn't give it a second thought. But you know, if I didn't bring it up, somebody would call me on it later. So there you go, okay? Moving on. The A95K runs Google TV exceptionally well. I was not at all surprised by this given Sony's prior Google TV performance. So the user experience is exactly what you'd expect if you've used Google TV before. And if you haven't, well, I think most folks like it. What is different is the remote. Yes, look at this little thing. Finally, Sony downsized its remote and I couldn't be happier. The remote for the A95K has a deep bronzish color brushed metal exterior on the top and a grippy textured plastic on the back. So it seats well in your hand. It also has a finder function now. So this little vent on the back is a speaker that chimes fairly loudly when you activate the finder function, which you can do using Google Assistant or the power button on the back of the TV. That's a feature that should be on all remotes in my opinion. Also, the remote is backlit. Thank you, Sony, because I assure you, if it were not backlit, I would be complaining about it. Mark my words, if a TV over a thousand bucks in 2022 doesn't have a backlit remote, I'm gonna have to have words about that. Anyway, no need for me to get carried away because Sony did the right thing, so I'm fine. So with that, I guess all that's left to say is that the TV looks amazing. It's not as expensive as I expected, and if you've got the money, you should absolutely buy it. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to, oh, you want details and context? Okay, fair enough. Succinctly stated, the Sony A95K QD OLED TV is a significant advancement of OLED TV technology. If prior OLED TV models showed iterative improvements year over year, this is truly a step up and it is literally next level. And oh man, it is so good. In a nutshell, Sony's QD OLED TV is just more of what was already awesome about OLED and it eliminates a couple of little annoyances I've had in the past with OLED, but there is a catch, sort of. See, the TV is not better in the way that I expected it to be, at least not in the way that I imagined, and not at the technical level that I expected. So while the takeaway here is going to be that I think the Sony A95K has the most gorgeous picture on a TV that I've ever seen that is not hyperbole, how it achieves that picture, how it wins you over just came as a little bit of a surprise, which is nice because I am not often surprised in this business. So to get into picture quality, let's start out with the numbers for Knit Nerds segment. I ran the A95K through the full suite of analysis that Calman Software offers in both SDR and HDR, and I honestly could not believe what I was seeing. Now, before I start tossing numbers at you here, I need you to understand that some of these numbers will not actually mean what you think they should mean. The numbers don't tell the whole story, but I'll explain exactly why. So this may come as something of a surprise, but in custom picture mode in HDR, the A95K's peak luminance from a 2%, 5%, and 10% white window was right at 1,000 nits. Surprised? Well, so was somebody I talked to at Sony. They were actually expecting slightly lower, but I was expecting something slightly higher, maybe? I thought maybe QD OLED might break the 1000 nit barrier. Maybe you did too. Now, I didn't have any scientifically based reason to think that. I guess I just thought this one reading might be higher because I just know this TV is brighter. And that's because this QD OLED TV is brighter than conventional OLED TVs, 100%. See, this is why the peak white luminance measurement so many enthusiasts are hung up on, admittedly, including myself, can be misleading. Because while that one measurement seems to indicate the TV isn't that much brighter than prior OLEDs, the real pay dirt is in the color brightness of this TV. Now, I'm not gonna rehash the QD OLED explainer here, but the QD OLED 101 is that it makes brighter blue, red, and green primaries. But they aren't just brighter, they are more pure. 
The real secret to this TV is in the color purity, especially the red. Oh man, the red is just so much better. Not just better than other OLEDs, it's better than QLEDs too. So the TLDR here is that the A95K QD OLED has much higher perceptual brightness thanks to the fact that there is no color filter and that colors are purer and brighter. And when you apply those facts to real world content instead of just test patterns, you get a lusciously vivid, undeniably engaging picture from this TV. Earlier, I mentioned that QD OLED addresses a couple of W OLED annoyances. One of them is the slight green cast that whites and grays tend to have on a W OLED. It's not something you really notice when you're just watching a conventional OLED TV, but when you put one next to a QLED TV, for instance, you can clearly see the green cast. QD OLED eliminates that. Whites and grays are now more pure. And that translates well to color accuracy too, which brings me to my next point. The color on the Sony A95K is the most accurate I have ever seen. Out of the box in custom mode, its errors are well below the threshold of human detection. And with the simplest of two point white balance adjustments, the color errors were the lowest I've ever seen in my 11 something years of reviewing TVs. And the TV was hitting just over 90% of the BT 2020 color space, which I find extremely impressive. Now, if I lost you there for a second, I apologize. The bottom line is, the color is not just the most accurate I can recall seeing, it is also just undeniably beautiful. You will see colors on this TV that you have not seen on a TV before, especially in the reds. Certain hues of red just haven't been produced on a TV until now, and you will see that when watching content. So just in case I haven't been super clear on this already, the Sony A95K has the best overall picture quality I've seen on a TV in terms of color, contrast, motion, detail, and depth. It ticks all the usual boxes, plus a few that I haven't seen ticked before. Still, I know there's gonna be some lingering questions. For instance, can it beat a super bright mini LED TV in a bright room? That's a question to which I would have to ask, beat it at what? I mean, if you have a sun-soaked room and only the sheer brightness of a TV is gonna make images visible, then no, the QD OLED can't compete with like a 2500 nit QLED TV from a sheer brightness horsepower perspective. But if you have a moderately bright room, sun pouring in, but not shining right on the screen, I think most folks would be more than fine. They'd be thrilled with the A95K's performance. The anti-glare is very effective. And let me be clear on this point as well. ABL or automatic brightness limiter is no problem. Let me repeat that. At no time did I notice any auto brightness limiter affecting the APL or average picture level performance on this TV. I looked for it too after many of you asked me to. No brightness shifts in extended super bright scenes when gaming or while watching movies or TV shows. I also didn't catch any when using test patterns either. Oh, and I know I'm only casually mentioning gaming here, but I think this TV is going to be fantastic for gaming too. Sony doesn't have a gaming hub per se like some other TVs we've seen, but all the essential elements are there. Low input lag, 4K 120 and VRR, even though very few games even need that. But most importantly, stunning picture. I mean, I spent some time playing Miles Morales and it was gorgeous and responsive and just a ton of fun. Look, I know there's much more to talk about with gaming and a bunch of other elements. I mean, how's it gonna compare to this TV or that TV? Does it screw anything up? Does it drop frames or stutter? I mean, there's no way I could get through everything in just one video, which is why the A95K will be back. I will have it here in my testing lab. We're gonna use it for a solid month here as opposed to a dark room down at Sony headquarters. And we're gonna put it up against other really high performance flagships and I'm gonna try my hardest to poke holes in this TV. So look forward to all of that because it is coming. But with the extensive testing I was able to perform over the course of two nine hour days, I'm confident saying that A95K has the best picture quality I've ever seen in a TV. And there is zero doubt, it's gonna be among the top three contenders for best TV of 2022. Yes, it really is that good. Thanks as always for watching everyone. One final note, you notice I didn't mention price and that's because Sony has not issued an official price, but we do expect the 65 inch to be somewhere around $4,000 if Sony's reward points are any indication. That being the case, what do you think of the Sony A95K? Leave me a comment down below so we can talk about it and here's two other videos I think you'll like.